All right, friends, I got a build show for you today that's a special treat. This is actually a YouTube fan who's been watching my videos for years and is building his first residential job. This house in a really nice neighborhood, we're in Highland Park, Dallas, is being built with a lot of my methods that I've used over the years, and yet I've never met this builder. He contacted me about a week ago and said, hey, I hear you're coming to Dallas. I'd love to show you my project under construction. And man, this is a special treat. There is some great details, including we're gonna get up on this roof and show you something that I have never seen before. Today's build show all about high performance construction. Let's get going. All right guys, special treat today. I just got a tour from Dario the Builder and this house has some really cool stuff going on. Now when you first walk up, the first thing you're gonna see on this house is this copper flashing right here at the front. He's also got uh, some of the Polywall Arroyo system waterproofing showing and it looks like a uh, kind of transitional house. He sent me a rendering of this house earlier and it's got kind of a uh, modern aesthetic but some traditional elements and when you first walk in the first thing that's a super dramatic entrance is the staircase there he is right there dario hey matt how's good it going man doing well how are you thank you so much for uh, giving me the tour brother i All really right. appreciate it good to see you this house man this is spectacular yeah, dario thank you. thank you very much now tell me about the staircase first thing that's going to be super dramatic when you walk in what is going on with this curved plywood. So this is gonna be plastered all around and it's gonna be very simple, kind of a minimal look. Mm -hmm. And my, my framers did a great job putting this together. It was interesting and, and fun to watch them do it. Yeah, so they curved the plywood it looks like, right? Yeah, they got some uh, half inch thick plywood here and they had to come and do some, some cuts every six inches or so to allow for it to bend. Got it. And then they must have kind of pushed this together, glued it, nailed it, screwed it all together. Yeah, they glue the back and then they glue the, the side that it goes on. They wait for it to get a little tacky. And then uh, you see a couple of guys come up and, and they'll hold it and another guy will come with the nail gun and they'll bend it and they do, looks like little three foot pieces at a time. Man, this is beautiful. And a little foyer detail as well with that really cool roof that your framer did. Yeah, we've got, uh, he did that by hand and he's very proud of it. I, I think it looks great. And a uh, little light cove, LED light cove up there to light up at night. Man, that's really cool. Now, Dario, you told me earlier um, that this is your first residential build. And I know you've been doing commercial construction for a while, uh, but how did you learn some of these things and, and find some of this stuff? So I've been a commercial developer for a while. Uh, and as you do these projects, you kind of learn how to do things. You watch the first demo job <laughs> that you hired a contractor to do. And you're like, oh, I could, I could buy a, a skid steer for the price I paid for the demo and do it myself. So I, I've got a little fleet of equipment and I've got a team that takes care of my commercial stuff. So I've been very successful. I've bought a few homes in the neighborhood. They've all ended up kind of falling apart after living in them. Dang. And I decided, you know what, I'm going to take matters into my own hands and uh, build something uh, above what the standard is. And I, I definitely is above the standard. Yeah. And I owe that credit to you. <laughs> I, I watch YouTube every night. I watch your videos and I show up on the job site, and, you know, saying this is what we got to do. I watched it last night and everyone's like, oh, another YouTube day for us. <laughs> so here we are. Yeah. Man, I love it. Now I'm seeing zip R sheathing on the outside. Tell me about the uh, zip R. What made you make the decision to use that? Well, I wanted a very comfortable, quiet home and I also wanted a, a good thermal break. So uh, I'd seen a couple of the uh, zip R systems with the with the insulation built into the sheathing and I wanted that continuous sheathing in, in front of the wood framing. And uh, you know, you're looking at the catalog, it says good, better, best, and R12 was the best. And uh, supposedly I'm the only one in Dallas that's ever ordered the R12. Oh it's usually a Northern product. Hopefully we'll see more of it. Yeah, so that gives you that continuous R12 all the way on the outside. And, it, and what did your guys say about installing it? What was the, uh, uh, what did the crew think? Was it hard? Was it easy? Was it learnable? Yeah, I think halfway through they got the hang of it. At first it wasn't the, uh, the easiest for them because there's a learning curve. Yeah. You're, you're, we're talking what, two and a half inch thick material here that you have to cut and do the angles and, and learn how to handle it. and. And uh, you have to have long enough nails and a, and a nail gun management to get the, 
the nail to go an inch and a half into the studs. Yeah, you got a long nail with that uh, two in Is it two inch or inch and a half insulation? Uh, it's two inches. It's two inch of insulation yeah. plus uh, the 716 zip. Yeah. Man, that's cool. Um, floor trusses, and my assumption is your mechanicals are gonna run probably through some of these floor trusses as well in this house? Yeah, we didn't leave that much room for mechanicals because we're still dropping. Uh, we have a, a fur down and a light cove in every room, so that's gonna give us another 18, 19 inches of room to run our, our supply and returns through, throughout the whole house. That makes sense. And then we're on subfloor here. I see you've got Advantex. So do we have uh, uh, framing underneath us, or what, what's, is this crawl space? Yeah, we have a full, the entire foundation of the house is a, is a basement garage mm -hmm. and uh, some entertainment space. Yeah. And so then this concrete I'm seeing out here, is that patio space out there? Or? Yeah, anywhere you see concrete, it's outdoor area. So, uh, well, you've got a nice covered porch here. So this door is going to have plenty of coverage. Thank you. Full glass, uh, 11 foot windows that open up. Uh, and then this is kind of the, the living area for the, the patio. Mm -hmm. And then you go up a couple of steps and you have kind of an outdoor kitchen, bar, island uh, area to entertain. Got it. And then what's, uh, what's going to be behind us here? What's in the backyard? We are getting a little silly with our, our swimming pool. The swimming pool is going to be the entire, I think, 28 foot wide. And it's going to go about 60 foot all the way to the back corner of the house. So it's going to look like the house is sitting on a pool. Oh man, that's going to be dramatic. How cool is that? I'm excited about that. The, the kids are excited about it. I bet they are. Yeah. All right. Now this is something I don't see on the job site very often. Uh, this looks like a 10 foot uh, sheet metal break. Is that what I'm looking at here? Yeah, we were, I wanted to try to do the best of everything. And from what I understand, copper is the best way to kind of do the, the foundation sill and you know, rather than having a guy come out, I have a guy on staff that's, that's pretty good with, with metal work. We went and we bought this, uh, this Ben press uh, from Vanmark. It's, it's been great. Uh, we buy the copper in 12, 16, 18 inch sheets. You just kind of stick it in here and uh, works great. So all there. that copper flash I saw on the outside yeah. is you, was bent right here. It was bent right here. Oh so man, that's awesome. to kind of figure things out. And, and that's got to help you on cost too, right? I mean, cop the copper material is an expensive uh, material. It's going to last pretty much forever. But you save some money by using the best material, buying the brake yourself, and then having your guys uh, bend it. And then you did the soldering too, right? Your guys yeah, did the soldering. Our guys did all that. We went to the local roofing supply and uh, they had this machine in stock and they keep the rolls of the copper in stock. And if you know how to do it or you can figure it out, uh, it works out for you. That's really cool. Can we go look at that detail real sure, quick? Sure, let's go check it out. Because I, I didn't totally understand what was happening on the front of the house with the elevation. Uh, we'll lace in that rendering that uh, Dario showed me earlier. But it looks like you've got stucco, but you've got kind of a stone ledge out here out of this copper. What am I looking at here? Yeah, so you've got your, uh, your R12, your Zip R sheathing, and then we've got the co copper that we've done. The copper, the, the sheathing comes and sits on this little lip that we have. Under okay. here, you've got a rubber gasket along with some butyl tape that gets compressed because we're ah. going to put some uh, cement block coming up so that we can put our... Uh, stucco right on the, the cement block. Got it. So you've got a four inch cinder block basically that's going to sit on there right. and that cinder block will go all the way up and then the stucco will actually get applied to the cinder block. So you'll have that air gap behind the cinder block. Yeah, we've got about an inch and a half air gap that goes all the way to the top and it'll, any water or moisture gets back there, it can either find its way out or at least there's air to dry it out. That's awesome. Man, I love it. Tell me the story that you told, <laughs> or tell these guys the story you told me about your excavation and your foundation. Yeah. Uh, and uh, let's actually walk down that way while you're talking. Yeah, I, uh, you know, I, I drove around the neighborhood looking for people to come and excavate and uh, dig this hole for me for the basement. And the prices I were getting was, was a little bit, you know, out of control. And I understand they've got insurance and taxes and things that they've got to take care of running a business. But yeah. And, and there is a, probably a little bit of a Highland Park tax too, right? There's You're a Highland Park tax. There's a, you know, I've got experience tax mm -hmm. and uh, they gave me a price. I, I, I just didn't understand it. We're digging a hole, right? <laughs> so I, I went and I, I rented a big excavator from the local equipment rental and I, I 
had them drop it off and I, and I dug it myself. That is so awesome. Yeah. How long did it take you? It took me about, uh, right when I started, we had record breaking rain. Oh. So it was kind of a, a game of water management and, and learning how to, we hit limestone pretty quickly. Yeah, a foot or two down. Yeah, about three foot in, we okay. hit the, the, the tan medium and then we got to the gray hard about eight foot. Got it. So, you know, I had to call, we, we started breaking the, uh, the tiger claw teeth that yeah. goes on the bucket, but yeah. Relatively, you know, fun, good. We dug it all out. You know, we make a lot of mistakes along the way, but you learn. And you save money compared to some of the bids you were getting, right? How cool is that? This is a make it happen guy. I love it, Dario. It was good. Man, you are, we are cut from the same cloth, my friend. I love it. All right, so we're walking down this back hallway. And the first thing I notice is, now we don't have all the sheathing and the windows in yet, but look at that light coming from the top. This is a uh, this was a late breaking addition. This skylight, right? Yeah, this was a decision along with many decisions. You know, it looks good on paper, but then you see it out in the field. And uh, my my framer likes to say this is the uh, the first project where it's been a new construction and a remodel at the same time. And and for all those comments saying I would never work for this guy, I, I compensate him. I adjust bids for for the amount of work that's happening. But we added the skylight, and there used to be a double wall all the way up. We took the wall out, so now you can see all the way down. Yeah, so this is just temporary bracing, just to keep keep everybody safe on the job. Right. That's gonna let a ton of light into this staircase. Yeah. Man, I wanna see your basement. Can we go see sure. that? Sure, let's go take it out. All right, let's do it. All right, so we've got uh, two by four, two by four floor trusses. We see these often in Texas, but not necessarily in other parts of the country. I really like them because they stay nice and flat. And then we've got what a uh, eight, ten? What's our basement height down here, Dario? We got nine foot down here. Nine foot down here. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Little yeah. Baker scaffolding is always helpful on the job. And then you framed all these walls out. Yeah. What's your? Uh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, we've got storage down here. You've got all your electrical. You've got a little gym. Now this is interesting. I don't see this every day. You put a, a jog in the top of your wall so your trusses could sit on the concrete, right? Yes. I and then you, and then these walls then are not bearing any weight. Right, it, we've got a little ledge on, on our concrete wall and it, uh, it sits, all the load is on there and then it gives you a continuous concrete on the front where there's no gap. Yeah, that's really smart. Now what else is down here though? This isn't just living space, is it? No. <laughs> elevator shaft probably, we've got right? A, yeah, full elevator that goes all the way up. Okay, so that will go up. You can press yeah. a button and head up. And then this would be a hallway. We got a fan in the way. And then this is the doorway into a garage. Yeah. Look at this garage. Oh, oh man, this is a sweet garage. So he's got a side driveway in here and that's gonna be your garage door. All this is underground. This looks like a what? A 10 car garage or something in here? Yeah, we're a nine car garage. Originally it was 12, but we added a little bonus space over here. And uh, it's, it's great. So in, in beautiful space. In, in Highland Park, Park City's area, uh, you wonder why there's basements here in DFW. The reason is that land is very expensive here. It's actually cheaper to go down than to go out. I so that's that. why they're starting to pop up here. That makes sense. Yeah, the, all the square footage is like bonus square footage. Correct. Can we see this? This looks like some kind of a sump pump area. Is that right? Sure, yeah. We just don't see this as much in the south because uh, we don't have a frost line here in Texas of any, uh, of any consequence. And so slab on grade rules the world. But, uh, you know, you dig a basement, you got plenty of room. What's, what's this pump system you got here though? So we've got a, a double six inch drain, French drain, going around the perimeter of the house right below the, uh, right below the, uh, the foundation. And if any water gets in, it, it all starts filling into the sump. And uh, you've got two pumps and they alternate and you've got different triggers that say, one pump comes on, two pumps comes on, you know, they both come on at the same time and it pumps everything out. Golly, that's awesome, man. Will you put a battery backup in for that too? Yeah, so or? I've done all my research. You have to kind of get rid of all the, the bad variables. You've got battery backup, you've got generator, you've got text message system, and then you've got to get rid of mosquitoes. It's a mosquito, well, that's what it is, it's a mosquito <laughs> yeah, trap. Right. Yes, yeah, smart. My, you want, you're, you're, my guys are getting bitten and, and For under construction, I love yeah. it, man. Man, that looks like a bomber. That looks like what you'd build in your commercial buildings is what that looks like, Dario. I did get it from a commercial supply house. For, uh, I, I like that about you. I like that about you. All right, so a ton of steel down here to support that and make this as open as possible. 
Uh, and then what's going on with this? You got a, a lip right here and, and uh, where this picnic table is. Tell me about this space. So I've got a little two, three inch lip all the way around. Let's say that th there is a flood or everything fails and I can't get down here. I'm out of town to hand pump things out, which is very rare. Yep. I, I wanted there to be, I didn't want the water to hit like the sheetrock and soak, soak up the wall. So this lip kind of stops that from happening. Yeah, makes sense. And then over here, we've got our wine cellar, bar kind of lounge area, uh, along with a theater. <laughs> home cinema. And then what's happening between, so we're in the home theater now where this picnic table is. We'll get a little nicer in the future. Yeah. Um, and then what's happening between this area? So and from, where... from the column back is the, little, is the theater, and mm -hmm. then from the column is all floor to ceiling glass. So you can kind of view oh. uh, a car collection or whatever it may How be that cool you have that, here. Yeah, man. so you can entertain you could have a bar down yeah, here and have a drink or watch the f1 game the, yeah, the formula one race <laughs> or game or, race yeah, shows how much i watch it i call it a game <laughs> <laughs> and, and then your your beautiful car could be parked right yeah, here too hopefully whatever car collection you have they're they're winning the race so man daria you have an incredible sense of style man thank you incredible or design maybe i should say i use those same spider boxes those things are really nice i've never seen one on a dolly before is that just so you can kind of wheel it around and bring power yeah yeah, right now it gets wet down here because we haven't been fully dried in, so we're keeping it off the ground so it doesn't get wet. It, it, it's, got the, it's got the legs underneath, but we just wanted to make sure. And we've got one on each floor. I love it. Yeah. All right, Dario, so we've been, uh, I teased it at the front of the video. Uh, what I've seen here is incredible, um, but some of this construction-wise has been done before. Let's go show these guys something that I've never seen before that Dario came up with that I think is awesome. We're gonna walk up, I'll meet you up on the roof. All right guys, we're already seeing stuff that we've never seen before right here. What are we seeing? I'll tell you in a second. Come on up. Oh my goodness. Dario. <laughs> I think when I came up here before, all I did was started laughing. Cause this is a thing of beauty, my friend. What are we looking at here? This is awesome. Thank you. You know, this was kind of an idea I came up with because I, I couldn't really get a definitive answer doing research whether to vent or not to vent a roof. Uh -huh. uh, you know, some people say, you know, vent it. Other people say, you know, don't do it. And then, you know, the roofing company might not, you know, warranty the shingles. So I decided, well, why don't, why don't I just do both? Dang. So, All right, so walk me through the system. This green zip, what's underneath here? This is the Zip R12. Oh. I brought it up and around from the wall. So you've got one continuous encapsulated house. It's all in one system. Got it. So this is Zip R12 right on your two by eight or two by 10 rafters. That's right. And then on top of that, so then you taped all that system and got a waterproof. That's right. And then we're looking at, uh, I'm assuming pressure treated. Two These by are fours? pressure treated two by fours that we ran down so that we could have our air gap and should any water get on it, it can find its way out. And then we've got liquid flash. Is that liquid what that is? Flash. Most of it is liquid flash. Uh, and uh, we wow. put it everywhere. And did you put a bead underneath these two by fours? We did. Put them down as well? We did everywhere. Anywhere there's a nail, anywhere there's an opening, anything, we put liquid flash Beautiful. everywhere. It, it got a little pricey, but yeah. you know. It's You're, a that's a bit. bomber system. Yeah, thank you. And then on top, okay, so then the zip bar is down. We got the two by fours. They're all liquid flash, so nothing's getting past here water wise. And then on top of that, you've got this foil draped on here. Talk to me about that. Right. So so, you know, now that we do have this gap, you're able to put the, a, a radiant barrier because, you know, yeah. you've, you've got your thermal heat, then you've got your, uh, your radiant heat. So yep. uh, you need that gap. And I thought, okay, I've got the gap. Let's put the, uh, the radiant barrier up. Whose radiant barrier is this? This is from uh, uh, Attic Foil Systems. Attic Foil. Ed over at uh, Attic Foil. Got it. Got it. And so is this foil on one side or both sides? So they've got a system where uh, it's only one side, but to kind of eliminate any problems on the field where somebody might put it on upside down. Potential you, error. 
Yeah, you just pay a little bit more and, and, the, and they'll put it on both sides so there's no mess ups on the job. Got it. And then on top of that, yeah. you've got some 5 8 um, zip system sheathing. Yeah, we got our 5 8 decking on here and uh, all your roof will just go right on top of this. Holy, that's awesome. And yeah. what's your final roof material? It's gonna be slate. It's gonna be slate. It's gonna be slate. Uh, and then I don't know if you can see, we, we only did our staples on the two by four side. Mm -hmm. We didn't put any staples on top of the foil. Now it's, yeah. not, it's not rated to, to stop any water, but that eliminates really any water going past that. Dario, you've now transitioned from being a normal builder to a thought leader. This is awesome, dude. I, appreciate I mean, that. this is incredible. I've never seen anything like this. Thank you. For you kids at home watching this, two things to, to know. Number one, Zip System doesn't uh, condone this method. <laughs> You're supposed to have a full decking underneath that. Uh, and they are one of my sponsors, so I need to make sure I mention that. Um, and, um, and so, you know, you always want to go with manufacturers Rex, but if you've got an idea and something that's, uh, you know, you've vetted with some other people, you've talked to your engineers and they say it's okay. Uh, you just know that you're not going to get the Huber zip, uh, warranty when you do something like this, but yet at the same time, this is an incredible system. I love it. And he's, you know, screwed these two buys down he's got his engineer to bless this. This is not only gonna be a beautiful roof, it's gonna be a super high performance roof. And Dara, you were telling me, even without any insulation underneath here, you used your FLIR gun on this at one point, right? Yeah, we had, we came out here on a, on a sunny day before we even had the, the radiant barrier up. And uh, I shot the, the top of the R12 and it was mm -hmm. 124 and we went underneath and shot it from underneath. It was 80, 81, it was about a 40 degree delta without- 40 degree delta. Yeah. Wow, that's incredible. Oh my gosh, man, this is wild. That's a steep roof pitch right there. I do not want to be the roofer who's putting that slate on right there. You better have some good tow boards on <laughs> and a good harness. All right, guys, let's, uh, let's get off the roof and I'm gonna show you a couple more things and we'll wrap up the video. All right, off the roof. Uh, I love the harness rack, by the way, Dario. Good, good call. Yeah. Is this your attic foil right here? That is the attic foil. I, I've, I've got enough to do actually the, the walls of the house also. So it comes actually in four foot rolls, I guess. That's pretty, looks like it'd be pretty easy to work with. Yeah, it wasn't bad at all. In fact, I had accounted for a big truck to show up when I ordered it and a little van showed up, the guy walked it out. <laughs> I was like, you need a loading dog? No, apparently not. How expensive was that? Do you mind if I ask you? No, I, I got the entire house, which I think it's about 12,000 uh, square foot of, uh, of sheathing, and it was about $3,000. That's not bad at all. That's pretty good for the radiant bear benefit. So here's the bottom of the Zip R right here, and there's two inches of foam between that and our uh, rafters. So you got a great thermal bridge there. What are you doing for inside insulation in here, Dario? So we're gonna do two and a half inches of closed cell on the roof and all the way down the walls. So completely closed off. And that also gives you some space to run all your, your wiring and, and electrical. Feature upgrades, that yeah. sort of thing. And we're able to do that because we do have the R12 on the outside to give us that continuum. And I love how you deck this. This is, even though you're gonna have mechanicals up here, this makes some great storage space for your homeowners. This is part of the air space, uh, you know, the air conditioned space uh, of the house as well. Yeah, we're gonna deck the entire thing. I, I like as a homeowner being able to to come up, stand up, work on units, check units, see what's going on, change filters, change filters whatever it is you need to do. What are you doing for equipment up here? You mind me asking? We're actually doing a, a split system LG. Oh, very yeah. cool. Yeah, um, and I've then we're that yeah we're getting three phase power, which allows us to get the commercial oh, wow unit outside. So rather than having like seven units, you've got two large units. Like are bigger than five ton? I'm assuming because they're commercial sized. Uh, yeah, bigger than five ton. Wow, that's really cool. See, that's that's something I have never done before. But you probably do all the time in your commercial work. We do. Actually, we we've it's just recently we've been getting into the building science stuff. So we haven't done too many split systems on the commercial side okay. yet. But gotcha, man. I'd encourage you if you don't already have one in the specs, throw a dehum in uh, your specs. Uh, keep that humidity down in this super tight house. You're probably gonna blow a blower door score of you know one ACH fifty or less. So it's gonna be a really tight end. We hope so. What's going on with the uh, Dallas Cowboys Stadium Gatorade cart that you stole? You know, I, I come out here in, in this hot heat and I've got my guys out of breath and, and not able to, to work by noon and they're out of water. So I, 
I, I bought this little system up here and I make sure it's filled every day. For you guys them. like you, I bet. Check yeah. that out too. There's a hose to drain. So he just yeah. fills up the ice, keeps it nice and cold. They, uh, they started smiling after this thing showed up. So that's, that's, that's a good sign. And it's interesting, you're using your, your lift. I'm assuming these are all rental units. Uh, and we use these forklifts a lot, the four-wheeled forklifts, the Sky, we call them Skytrax. I don't know if that's a brand name or what. Yeah. But you've got a high lift too, so that you can uh, have your guys installing the sheathing, nailing it off. They've got a nice safe workspace. I like that a lot, man, that's great. Yeah. Very you. smart idea. What is this room we're in now? We're in the master bedroom. Okay, right this now. is master bed. Yeah. Got it. Beautiful, man. Dario, incredible house, dude. Yeah. I'm very, very impressed. Thank you, for your first residential build, I know you're not a, uh, you're not a rookie by any means on the commercial right. side, but for your first residential build. Appreciate you. Dang, man. Yeah. I really appreciate you contacting me. What a yeah. tour. Thank you. Um, guys, if you want to follow along with this build and what Dario's up to, um, go check out his Instagram channel. But I'm going to meet you at one of his commercial projects, and we'll close out the video from there. All right, guys, before before I leave, actually, there's something I wanted to show you. I want to share a great story that Dario told me earlier about his foundation waterproofing. We're, the garage entrance is right over the side here, and you can see a little bit of the product he used. This is Polywall's peel and stick uh, basin waterproofing and Polywall's Arroyo drain board system. But Dario, tell me the story for these guys uh, about how you ended up doing this system. Yeah, so similar to trying to find somebody to excavate and the, the price was astronomical, I got a bid from a, a gentleman who does all the basement waterproofing in this area and when he gave me the price I just didn't make any sense and I, I asked him I go why is this so much and he said well you you need to have a bobcat you need to have an excavator you need to have this you need to have that and I was like you need to have a laser and I was like okay well I have all these things so um, I got on Polywall's website Dan uh, was yeah. uh, very helpful I think they're an hour from here and um, walked me through the whole system I ended up going with the peel and stick I uh, and I was looking at your videos, Matt, and that's kind of what we used as our as our Bible or manual to say to to get this done. My guys would come out, and while I'm watching the videos, I noticed that it looked a lot like wallpaper. And you had mentioned in another video, if you do the roll-on, you can have your painter do it. And I called my wallpaper guy up, and I showed him your video, and I said can you put this on? And him and his crew came, looked at it, and just like wallpaper, they stuck it up at the top and then rolled it down yeah, and overlapped see it. It's vertical and, here. Yeah. Oh my gosh, so, man, that is so awesome. Been real happy with it. But and this, did you come out under price compared to the uh, waterproofing guys bid? We just came out at 30 to 40% of what the bid was. Wow. So we, wow. we saved that money and with that money, I'm able to do the thicker insulation and, and spend money where people usually don't. So awesome, man. Have yeah. you, and have you had any issues with water in your basement? We have had zero issues. I've been really happy with it. We, we put this on obviously for the, we backfilled the rock all the way up. So that protects it from damage. It looks to me like you've got a pretty bomber um, uh, French drain system down there too that we showed earlier goes into an incredible yeah. uh, sump pump, uh, double pump, uh, fully backed up system. Yeah, yeah. Real Impressive, Dario. It. When it rains, it's, it's nice and dry, so. All right, guys, wrapping up this shoot over here at a coffee shop, which is actually one of Dario's commercial projects. We're at La La Land Coffee. Dario, tell me the story behind this coffee shop. This is one of uh, currently one or two, but future many locations? Yeah, we're at two, and we have a third one coming online in seven weeks and six more down the pipeline. Um, it's a concept that my business partner and I came up with after learning about the, uh, the life of uh, foster kids who age out of the system. 30% uh -huh. uh, of them on their 18th birthday become homeless. Wow. And when you hear it's these- terrible. It's terrible. It's a terrible, it's a terrible story. So when you actually sit down and you, and you learn about these stories and you hear what they go through and, and, and what happens to them when they turn 18, uh, you kind of feel like you have to do something. So my, my partner and I started a, uh, a nonprofit called the uh, We Are One Foundation. Mm -hmm. And we started raising money and we realized that you know, you can't just throw money at the problem. Uh, these kids need to have a foundation and something that's going to give them a future that they can live on. And that, that starts with a, a job.
And so all your baristas are uh, folks that used to be in the foster care system and are now older than 18? So it's, it's a mix of employees. Okay. We try to get a good amount of people at each location to be foster kids that have aged out. We bring them on. The purpose is to uh, give them life skills, coach them, uh, teach them to be able to have a job and the skill set. So if they ever go somewhere, they can get a job as a barista or whatever it might be. So, That's so great, man. Yeah. And if you're out looking for coffee, would you rather go to the big uh, green box? Yeah. Or would you rather go to uh, La La Land Coffee? I'll tell you, this is some really good coffee. Yeah, we're, we're a social, responsible entrepreneurship. We make a profit, but we also try to make a social cause. Our motto is to be kind and so uh, cool. show love to everybody. And uh, the city's embraced us and we love it. And, and we hope that uh, everybody kind of follows our business model. Dario, what an impressive and super fun morning I've had hanging out with this guy. What an incredible guy. Uh, and if you're in Dallas, make sure you go check out one of these. I mean, the coffee here, so, so good. And guys, I'll put a link to Dario's uh, Instagram for both this business and his personal account if you want to follow along with the construction process. Super, super fun day hanging, hanging out with you, Dario. What an incredible house you got under construction. Yeah. Guys, if you're not currently following me and this is your first time here, hit that subscribe button below. You know we've got new content every Tuesday and every Friday. Follow me on Twitter or Instagram. Otherwise, I'll see you next time on The, the Build, Build Show. Show. Yes.